welcome to Ad America with me, Andrea Oriel, as your e-guide for today. Conservation is a field that focuses on protecting the natural world and it is a critical part of our effort to preserve the planet for future generations. And in the spirit of celebrating Women's History Month, in today's Ad America podcast, Women in Conservation, we are going to spotlight women who are working in conservation and explore their experiences, challenges, and success. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our podcaster for today. She is a, an independent journalist, professional MC, and podcaster, Puri Aninita. Hello, Andrea, thank you so much for that kind introduction. And I would like to say hello, everyone. Thank you so much for making the time for logging in and also joining us here today at Ad America Hall uh, on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. Big round of applause to all of us. Um, we're celeb yes, we're celebrating uh, Women's History Month. So ladies, again, a big round of applause for all of us and our male allies. Yeah, we, uh, we've seen uh, boys <laughs> and papas and daddies. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, again, my name is Puri Anindita, so happy to be here. And uh, I admire your enthusiasm because today we'll be talking about um, how our life will be impacted uh, by for years to come if we don't do anything significant because climate crisis is already having dire consequences. But the most important question would be, what should we do about it? Yeah. So joining us here tonight is Mbak Widya Budi Santoso, who I admire so yeah. much. She is the co-chair of Reformers, an NGO focusing on ocean conservation, founder of Roots Lab, uh, and also an alumni of Harvard University. Again, Bawidia, thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you for having me. The pleasure uh, is mine. Big fan of your work, but let's start, let's dive right in. Let's okay. start with what actually are the top five of main contributing factors to climate change? What are they? Okay, so um, the first one, which is the biggest one, is the burning of fossil fuels. Fossil fuel. Yeah, and uh, we use that for generating power, like electricity or heat, mm -hmm. and also to manufacture goods. And the second one is deforestation. It's land clearing for um, housing or for agriculture. The third one is transportation, okay. sea, land, and air, the gas emission that it produced. The fourth is food production. Uh, mm. It's all the. It starts from the process of making food until it reaches the customer. There's packaging, repackaging, and then transportation in it as well. Okay. And the last one is overconsumption. And it can be overconsumption of electricity at home mm. or food or everything that we use daily, like plastic bags, um, yeah. the clothes that we wear, uh, fast fashion, and all that. So all those five factors that mm -hmm. you just mentioned, mm -hmm. does that mean this is the top factors globally or uniquely Indonesia? No, it's global. global. It's globally, yes. Global, globally. okay. Yeah. Um, I know you focus more on conservation, but I mm. also hear a lot about biodiversity conservation actually helps combat climate crisis. Can you walk us through why this is important? Yeah, of course. Um, it's very important to understand what's climate crisis and what is biodiversity we hear this a lot yes. but it's just like a buzzword exactly yeah so um i would like everyone who are in the studio tonight when you are being asked what's climate change mm -hmm. you can answer them with confidence yes please. so climate change refers to long-term shift in temperature and weather patterns okay so we are actually um, in the middle of climate change. It has been happening for years, and the severity uh, is increases each year, mm. like with the heat wave in London uh, last year, and then all the floods all over Indonesia, yeah. uh, all the weather patterns that is not usual. And biodiversity is built by three main tightly intertwined features, which are ecosystem, genetics, and species. So I would like um, all of you to try to imagine the connection between each species is a threat. Bahasa Indonesia nya benang. Yeah. Jadi, uh, in a rainforest ecosystem, there's thousands of species. 
So you can imagine thousands of threads intertwined with one another, mm -hmm. making a very strong net. Yeah. If one species uh, suddenly decreases and then gone extinct, one of the threads is loose, fall, yeah. and the net start to crumble. Yeah, yeah, disintegrate. Yes. Oh goodness. Yeah. Me. So um, the Earth itself has a lot of ecosystem, and these ecosystem are all vul vulnerable to changes. So uh, a strong bio, uh, a, a rich biodiversity guarantees strong resilience against climate change. Mm. So yeah. uh, like a rainforest with a lot of species is stronger to fight climate change depend, uh, compared to one where there's only few species. Yeah. Without biodiversity, a jungle would become a desert and coral reef yeah. would be lifeless rock. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I understand from, I don't know if you've heard the news mm -hmm. of Again, the buzzword mm -hmm. that the numbers, at least, yeah. that lingers in my head is we need to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Celsius yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I checked to UN's IPCC. Mm -hmm. They indicate that the greenhouse gas emission must. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not a, a nice to have. It's a mm -hmm. must mm -hmm. um, to to make sure that the green gas, uh, greenhouse gas emission must decline 45% by 2030. Mm -hmm. By 2030 means seven years from now. Yes. So how optimistic are you given, you know, all the changes that we have so far? We have, we've just gone through pandemics, but mm. also we've just had COP27 in Egypt. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So having said that, are you more, more of an optimist mm -hmm. or you're always be the pessimist in, in this scenario? Um, honestly, if we keep reading news, um, I cannot see a happy ending to the story. Yeah. But we okay. cannot keep focusing on the problem. We just pivot directly to the solution mm. because whatever is happening in the international level, we are actually quite far from that. But each one of us can actually do something mm. that uh, will make our planet healthier and better. So just keep doing that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you, okay, okay, take me back to what what's happening in Egypt, uh, mm. COP twenty seven. Uh, that happened December, I think November, December. Yeah. What are the key takeaways or uh, that you can share with us? The understanding amongst all all countries in the world. Well, um, I think the main takeaways is they decided that. There will be more protection for the ocean, but actually, um, during the COP 27, um, they haven't been able to agree uh. on how much degree, uh, how many percent of the ocean yeah. we have to protect. It's okay. still all push and pull and negotiations. Mm -hmm. But just recently, um, the UN committee, I forgot, uh, Rina Lim, um, they have agreed on 30% of the ocean being protected, and before it was just 1.2%. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. So, so that's fantastic news. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic yeah. news. Mm -hmm. So happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. And also, um, from global point of view, mm -hmm. how can Indonesia play a significant role in this, in you know, fighting climate change okay. crisis? Indonesia is a country that is strong in numbers. We mm -hmm. are the fourth most populated in the world. You're right. So, and... It's it's a surprise to see the numbers that Indonesia have the third most social media user, just third after China and India in Asia Pacific. Yeah. So we actually have a lot of people who are um, into technology. Yep. They definitely can read. Um, there's opportunity there. Uh, we can spread message about how to best solve climate change. Mm. Um, it's, uh, it's good that now uh, most the, the international world is paying a lot of attention to climate change. It's now mainstreaming. Mm -hmm. Basically, everybody is talking about the environment. If you have a company, they have to show that the company is green and taking part in all this conservation stuff. So um, Indonesia have that strength, I think. So if 
imagine what we can do together if we aim at the same goal and not divided by gender, religion, or race. Love it, love it. We'll, we'll touch uh, on that uh, mm -hmm. in a moment, but mm -hmm. also as a co-chair of Reformers. Now, mm -hmm. walk us through what you do with Reformers. And I would like to say hi to all the members coming in. Thank you so much for making the time. So you focus energy more on coral transplantation yes. and yeah. ocean conservation in Indonesia. So mm -hmm. what you know, which which area, how do you do it? Okay. Um, yeah, walk us through that. Okay, so uh, we all know that Indonesia is a maritime country, right. where 70% of the population heavily depended on the ocean as their livelihood. Mm -hmm. So it's natural that the well-being of these uh, coastal communities are very important. So reformers want to jump into ocean conservation, not only to protect the ocean's ecosystem, but also to make a measurable and significant impact on the coastal community's uh, life. Mm. Um, by coral transplantation, we increase the biodiversity. And what we do is we make artificial reefs, which is new home for this fish and marine life. Aww. And this way, the number yeah. of fish in the area will increase and that will directly impact the income of the fishermen. Okay. And uh, if you, we want to continue with more fishes, then the diving instructor will also benefit the tourism and even the uh, food vendors around mm. the beach. Yeah. yeah, I admire that kind of movement, mm. uh, but also I, I have this understanding that it takes not only courage, but also a lot of communication mm. with local Fishermen, for example, mm -hmm. like, why should I do this? Why mm -hmm. should I contribute mm -hmm. through this movement? How mm -hmm. do you achieve that? How can you make sure that they actually play a significant role also yeah. on this? Okay, so um, in every relationship, as long as it's a win-win relationship, mm -hmm. it will last long. So we ensure our in our relationship with the government, the policymakers, and then the community, the coastal uh, communities and also the funders, the one who donate yeah. to us, that we always um, keep uh, our transparency. We make sure there's trust that will never be broken. Mm -hmm. And then we make sure they also benefit from us. Mm -hmm. So these fishermen, when they don't fish, they rent out their boats. Okay. And we rent out their boats to go do our monitoring trip each ah. month. So, okay. yeah, and now as the transplantation site is growing, um, we do more than uh, twice, uh, we do more than once a month. Now we do it twice a month. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and then we they are actually making money out yeah, of it. Yeah, they, they are. And we collaborate as well with local diving clubs. Oh, uh -huh. So nice. uh, most of the members of the diving clubs would help us during this monitoring trip. Okay. And we always buy food and consumption for, from all the local vendors. We have the best pisang goreng near our place uh, <laughs> with the Buddha Buroa. <laughs> so that's in Sulawesi. That's in Sulawesi. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any any plan to you know just go further? Um, well, the license that we have, the o uh, the license to use the ocean space ah, in okay. the, our area is quite big already. It's around like a thousand and five hundred meters square, and now we only used up three hundred meters square. So we're gonna fill that up first, because it's not easy to move uh, or to expand to another city, because the success of coral transplantation heavily depends on the water quality. I see. Uh, that's why. When I first see um, Pulau Seribu, for me, I'm not. I'm. It's hard not to compare because the worst in North Sulawesi is like the best in Pulau Seribu. What? In, in my opinion. Yeah. Because, okay, okay. Because and here, I, we trust yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> because here there's a lot of industry, right? So I see. the water visibility cannot be as clear yeah, as yeah. in North Sulawesi. And then the salinity. Ooh. There's a lot of factors to it. Okay, yeah. You s yeah, of course, we start with what we can, Yes, and you can start that uh -uh. from Sulawesi, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. But, okay, because I live in Jakarta, mm -hmm. most of us here lives in Jakarta, yeah. what can we do about it? You can donate to us. 
<laughs> loud and clear. Okay, I will. <laughs> With Ramadan coming up, I know where yeah. to donate now. Okay, but so it doesn't stop you from, you know, uh, reaching out to other area, right? No, of course. Um, okay. But we will need... Of course, with every collaboration, we will need expertise from the local area. They know best. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you mentioned earlier, we just celebrated International uh, Women's Day a few days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but, unfortunately, I saw this report from UN Women mm -hmm. uh, that says the climate crisis is actually not gender neutral. Women and girls experience the greatest impact of climate change. Can you explain yes. more why is that? Okay. Um, before I go into the details, I would like to tell a story. It's make-believe, but not really make-believe, because it's the reality that is happening. Okay. Imagine a poor family of a mother, a father, a daughter, and a grandmother who lives together in the same house. Mm -hmm. They're from the poor community. Okay. So the mother and father are farmers, so they work every day in the farm. Right. The daughter goes to school, because mm -hmm. the government gives free tuition yes. for uh, uh, every gender to study and then the income from the family only comes from the crops from right. the harvest of the crops yes the mother do much more than that she have to go and fetch the water and then she have to take care of the elders she take care of the household and she has no time for herself so and she also helps in the farm right correct yeah and then few months have gone on and then suddenly there's an accident and the father um, got crippled somehow. So he cannot work in the farm anymore. Mm -hmm. So now there's only the mother. Yeah. So the mother has to call the daughter to drop out of school so she can help her in the farm. But still they are making less because the, the power a child can have cannot be as strong as men. Right. And then if that's not enough, suddenly a uh, natural disaster come, flood. A very big flood came, and because the father was at home and he's crippled, he, he passed away. He did not survive. He did not survive not only because he was crippled at the time, because he cannot swim. Many poor people still cannot swim because they were never taught how. Yeah, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, so now there's only three women in the house. The mother, the daughter, and the grandmother, yeah. but the crops are all swept away by the flood. Mm -hmm. So what should they eat and how can... They live. Yeah. They live, right? And then they go to the bank, and uh, that's the only thing that the mother can think of. Can I borrow some money so I can um, redo my uh, field? And then they ask, the certificate of your land is under your husband's name, not you. If so, just call your husband to borrow it. And then she have to say, my husband already passed away. Yeah. So if this cycle continues, it's just a vicious cycle that never ends. And this was built not, it's not, it's nobody's fault. It's a systemic injustice yeah. that has been going on for centuries. Yeah. The norm, the culture, and the policy that is made. Yeah. So when you ask why, First, because they, uh, women and girls does not have financial security. They have no access to economy. And also, they, some of them are denied of their rights of education. And last, they have no voice at the big table. Nobody ever invite them to any agreement uh, to tell their stories and to voice their concern. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's why. Oh, goodness me. I think you sum up pretty much everything <laughs> in that story, uh, that the norm, the culture, and policy are still gender biased. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, listening to your story, education is also important, but also having that uh, financial independency mm -hmm. is also important. Yes. Um, we're re we are now approaching Indonesia's political year. Yes. I don't want this to be too political, but... What can we do better? Because now we have a voice, right? Mm -hmm. And to make sure, how can we use our voice to make sure that this, what we talk about, mm -hmm. is now at least um, make to top three of the priorities mm -hmm. that the policy makers right now mm -hmm. uh, discussing mm -hmm. in our parliament or mm -hmm. even our future president and vice president making sure that they will monitor the progress mm -hmm. and not just, you know, uh, keep, you know, 
giving promises, what mm -hmm. can we do better? How can we use our voice? Yeah, uh, we have to do a lot of research. Do your own research. Do your own due diligence. Uh, try to see historically uh, which candidate have consistently been doing something good for the environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides that, we have to know Indonesia is a, a very complex country. There's a lot of interests that might be the opposite of one another, yeah. like the problem of overfishing. Mm -hmm. If you suddenly make a policy for the fishermen not to overfish, you have to first make sure that their income is not cut short by that policy. Oh, if not, okay. the fishermen are not going to vote for you, mm. right? Mm. So, um, yeah, uh, when we when we judge one of the candidate, we have to be mindful that it is also not easy for them. So, yeah, put everything into consideration. Yeah, and then really think, not just follow the popular vote. Yeah, of course. Yeah, really yeah. think and do your research. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And we live in the er in the era of social media. Yes. Not everything that we read are true. true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, do our homework. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, we've heard that story, mm -hmm. and we don't want that to happen to our children and future mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. and grandchildren. But how can we play a more significant role, especially in climate change and climate crisis? Yes. Um, okay. I think women has been always a consistently a very a very strong figure in history. Mm. The thing that makes them so limited is the norm, the culture, and the policy that is always inequitable for them. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to level the playing field first before mm. we ask women to do something. Yeah. First, guarantee their right to education, right? everywhere in the world. Even that, not many people still can't. Like yeah. I know in many Middle Eastern countries, they cannot pursue higher education. Yeah. yeah. And then secondly, the government should give empower uh, economic empowerment for women. What I mean is you have to understand that many people don't even have any asset to give to the bank as a guarantee. The government should have a program where they can borrow money like weekly so they can make uh, uh, extra income and try to be independent. And the government can create a method where they can check in on them, maybe daily or every two days, so uh, the money will be used appropriately. Mm -hmm. And lastly, of course, always invite them as the key stakeholders in every agreement that you're going to make. Every time it's made by mostly men, Mm. who doesn't really feel the impact of these climate changes, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So invite them and listen from them or find a representative that really work with them. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ma male allies. Yeah, male allies. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, please, please do make room for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, also, when, when we want to have an initiative yeah, or a mm. project, Policymakers and fun or money mm -hmm. are basically ma the main two factors that have uh, the biggest impact on the prospect of the success of that initiative yes. or project. Uh, my question to you as a co-chair, and mm -hmm. we have we also have the founder here amongst us. Hello, <laughs> uh, welcome, and uh, thank you for doing what you do. Don't stop, and we need to talk after this. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, how do you navigate the two? Because mm -hmm. this has been the ongoing question from all activists that I know mm -hmm. is navigating, okay, how, how can I communicate with policymakers and to make sure that they actually champion this initiative mm -hmm. and all, oh, but to do that, I need money. And how can I make my own money mm -hmm. to support this initiative? It's like a cycle that, is. you know, sometimes is <clears throat> tiring to yeah. think about. Yeah. But, but maybe you have a tip. Okay. Um, it's true, it's not easy, but once you have someone, a point of contact that you can communicate with, make sure you maintain that communication, right? Mm. And then build a good relationship. And then make sure you give some benefits back to them. Not in terms of money. Okay. Like, um, when we first start this initiative, we have to follow the regula 
foundation, register mm -hmm. our foundation, okay. and then we have to ask permission to use the ocean space, and we have to go to the Ministry of Maritime and Fisheries for okay. that. Okay. And then we make sure that we follow everything by the book. Mm -hmm. We're not um, being uh, neglectful of anything, and we even get our coral seeds from the coral stock center that belongs to the Ministry of Maritime, Maritime and Fisheries, oh, okay. because it is actually not allowed to just cut some wild corals and then plant it. Oh. That, that's what's being um, um, t the 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 government are trying to tidy up all that because you're actually killing the big and wild corals yeah. for one that might not survive. So we actually take everything from them. But like just last year in December. We make an event together with other 41 divers from different diving clubs mm -hmm. to clean the corals that belongs to the uh, Ministry of Maritime and Fisheries. That's awesome. Yeah, without yeah. them having to ask. Okay. And we also share our data so they can learn from our side as well. Mm. And in terms of funders, um, we give them um, semester reports okay. complete with all the... Uh, water quality data, the currents, and everything to make sure that everything is transparent. Okay. And we make sure that we are always welcome whenever they want to come and see our site. Oh, okay. Yeah, so as long as we treat them as partners instead of just like colleagues, you know, I like see. we have to build that intimacy. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, you'll get by, yeah. Okay, <laughs> how long do you think we need to invest that friendship yeah mm -hmm. before we make a significant change or move um i don't think you have to wait just mm -hmm. go as i mean everything you do by doing right it's trial and error so whatever you can think of you can pursue that while building that relationship on the side okay yeah and if it doesn't work then it's a lesson for you. Lesson learned yeah, and do it again. Learn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We focus and try something else. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The 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 word is begin. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Begin. And also, we're actually waiting for your questions. Um, you can jot down your questions on the comment section, and I will read it to Mbak Widya in mm -hmm. 15 minutes. So just shoot your questions, and we'll discuss it. Now let's talk about individual action. Not everyone mm -hmm. is probably has time to dedicate their energy to join a movement. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I do. I do want to play a significant role individually mm -hmm. from my house, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. What can we do to combat climate change from home? Okay. There, there are so many things. I mean, the possibilities are endless. But let's uh, try to build it from things that we do daily. Like we have to eat, right? Yeah. Before we eat, we have to cook. Before we cook, we have to buy things from the grocery store, traditional market, or Tokopedia, <laughs> whichever. Um, try not to buy in bulk or too much because many times we don't actually finish it. Ah, I was almost as, yeah, yeah, mm. because I usually buy things in bulk because it's cheaper. It is. But do you always use that ah, up? If you always use angle. it up, if yeah. you always use it up, it's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the overconsumption that yeah, you are more yeah, right. concerned. Yes. Okay. And then when you're eating, this is also good for your health. Remember to eat more vegetables. Mm. Because meat, the production of meat, produce more methane and uh, the greenhouse gas emission. I heard about that, but uh -huh. I thought it only applies to the Western world. How um, about Indonesia? It's the same. It's, it's from the digestive si system of oh, the animals. It's not the, uh, okay. Uh -huh. It's not from the farming perspective. No, no, no. no. It's from science perspective. Ah, okay. The physical science of the animals. I see. Uh -huh. Okay. So yeah, eat yeah. more vegetables. Eat that's... more vegetables. Okay. And then with your food waste, sometimes we do have like when we cook with green onions, you have all the roots, right? Right. Replant them instead of throwing them away. Ooh, it's been yeah. a while since I... And yeah. yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. I, sometimes we, <laughs> I don't want to do it if there's no incentive. It's, it's not easy, but you can pick which one are suitable for you. Okay. And then in terms of clothing, um, I think this is very important because we are women. We like nice stuff. Yeah. 
but try to invest in things that last longer, mm -hmm. even though it's more expensive, but you know you'll appreciate it more and you will use it to its full life cycle instead of doing the fast fashion thing. It's cheap, I'm gonna buy it and then I'm just gonna throw it away in a few months. Yeah. Um, and then use uh, eco-friendly bags, use tumbler and um, LED lights. If possible, change everything to LED lights. It's much more cheap. Uh, it's cheaper for your electricity bill as well. Yes, and although true. not everybody owns a house, but if you are privileged to have one and you can uh, put solar panels, please do. And even the government have cash rebates for that now. Yeah. And if you're producing more than what you need, they can buy from you the PEL and actually buy electricity from you. Ooh, yeah. that's a thought. And hmm. then, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. What else? Uh, we use Tumblr. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but okay, talk, uh, talk, uh, talk more about your other initiative or project called mm. Roots Lab. Okay. What is that? Okay, so Roots Lab is an effort <laughs> from me because I love art. Mm -hmm. I have been painting sim since I was small, mm -hmm. but I never get to pursue it professionally or even study them academically. I'm just on uh, learning by doing painter. Mm -hmm. And while doing it, I want to do something that is not solely for my benefit, something beneficial for the environment. So by combining art and um, this principle of reducing and reusing and recycling leather, I get to do both. Uh, I want to send a message to people that when you are bored with your thing, and many times we are bored not because it's already broken, yeah. it's still nice, you're just bored with it, mm -hmm. you can do something instead of throwing it away. Ah. Yeah, Bring it to me and, and, and oh, I create nice something philosophy. new out of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay, check it out guys, <laughs> Roots Lab, yeah? yeah. Uh, you mentioned fast fashion. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, walk us through why it's harmful. Because mm -hmm. I need to confess, mm -hmm. um, some of my items, fashion items, mm -hmm. are from fast fashion mm -hmm. brands. Mm -hmm. Not that I change it every six months. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I'm trying to be mindful about mm -hmm. it. But, but take, uh, yeah, walk us through why this is harmful in the long run. Yeah, uh, just imagine if everybody is doing that. Mm -hmm. Instead of, so reducing and reusing is much more important than recycling. Why? Because the fact is a lot of things that we say we recycle, only 20% can be reused, not mm. all. So the landfill is full of things that is still useful, but nobody want to use it anymore. Okay. So, and there has been no solution to trash as well. The landfill is still full and you cannot burn it, you cannot recycle everything, it takes yeah. too long. And what I mean by fast fashion is not like how you describe it, Mapuri. What you do is okay, okay because you need it, right? And you still use it for a long time. Yeah. And then you buy it if you feel you need it. Yes, yes. I'm that person. Yeah. But also, yes, I need to, you know, just be realistic that fast fashion brand also offer cheaper price. That's true, that's mm -hmm. true. And I'm not saying it's strong, it's totally fine. Everything I wear is fast fashion brands as well. <laughs> so it's okay. But um, for example, you wanna get something new and okay. you just bought a jacket and then in three months you wanna buy a new one. Yeah. Maybe you can donate your old one instead of just leaving it in your uh, closet. Yeah. Or now, I know some people have been very creative, opening like rentals for um, luxury dress for yes. you to go to parties right. or sometimes just office outfit. They have yeah. it like weekly. I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah, because my yeah. closet is not getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. I live in an apartment. So yeah, yeah, yeah. what w the solution is buy a house because mm. I need a bigger <laughs> closet. I don't think that's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that yeah. makes sense. But yes, mm. that is groundbreaking yeah. i agree rent yeah. not mm. buy yeah? yeah okay now also another buzzwords of last year mm -hmm. two years i think especially mm -hmm. with the pandemic um that i've heard a lot is corporate greenwashing mm. greenwashing yes 
Yeah. Okay. What is that? Okay. Um, greenwashing is promising environmental benefits that you won't deliver, and a lot of brands are doing it. Big brands. Um, it's very dangerous. Why? Okay. Let's say a brand say they're eco-friendly while they are not. First, there's a harm in tarnishing your own brand image when you're not actually doing what you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. If it turns out that it's not eco-friendly and people found out, yeah. um, they won't trust your brand anymore. And then there's also uh, an adverse environmental effect from that because people are buying your brand more mm -hmm. while there's other brands that are greener which doesn't advertise as often because they don't have as much funds, that doesn't get bought at all. Yeah. So the world is filled with things that are not green. It's just a make-believe green. Oh. So we are actually <laughs> moving backwards instead of forward. Okay. Yeah. And then um, we are actually silencing those companies who want to do good. That's yeah. correct. And we're making the whole industry untrusted by the consumer. Even our competitors in the same line would feel that effect. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, but I believe the consumer mm -hmm. also play a significant role in mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, but also we need to do something better than just, you know, sometimes we, oh, we read, we read yeah, the, lab, yeah. the label mm -hmm. and it says, oh, it's eco-friendly mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. we use how many percentages of this fabrics mm -hmm. out of mm -hmm. uh, recycled fabrics, for yes, example. Yes. How can we make sure mm. that what we've read is actually true? Yeah, again, it's uh, due diligence. You have to do your homework. Research. But there's there's some um, okay, there's some tips as well. I mean, like when they say eco-friendly, they actually have to do what you just explained. They have to write how many percent of this, how many percent of this. Oh. Many just okay. write eco-friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we're green. Yes. Or like, for example, um, a food packaging. Mm -hmm. They want to show that they're green. They just put a label. Or ocean green. friendly yeah, or something. Yeah, things like that. Okay. Yeah. And then um, read the news and check their reports. Like many beverages company, I don't want to say any brand, um, always put in their um, advertisement cans and glass uh, bottles. Okay. But in the landfill, mm -hmm. all we see are plastic bottles with their brand on it. Mm -hmm. So it's like you are advertising that you are going greener. But the fact is you're just producing the same plastic bottles. Mm. right? And then the, we can read um, sustainable reports from the companies. I know like there's one um, automobile company who are actually doing a lot of good things. They're donating a lot to the conservation uh, and they also are trying to be greener themselves in their product line. Yeah. So it needs to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You cannot just erase your sin by donating to a good cause. Yeah. Do yeah. something so your product itself is greener. Yeah. I see. Uh -huh. um, well, this just got viral. Mm -hmm. uh, I read this from Reuters. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I don't read the brand. <laughs> so... <laughs> There's this brand, they promise to test, oh, sorry, Rotors uh, put that promise to the, to the test by planting hidden trackers in inside mm. 11 pairs of donated shoes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've read this somewhere. Mm. Um, and it ended up in Indonesia. So mm. it's a, yeah, the movement or the project came from Singapore, um, and they promised that uh, this pair of shoes, for example, will be recycled into some other thing. I don't know mm. what it is. But because they got 11 pairs of donated shoes um, trackers, mm -hmm. they track it back and they sell it in Indonesia. Mm. So this is new information for mm. me. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if this kind of practice is familiar to you as as activists. Mm -hmm. what, what would you like to say about this? Having heard this news... Mm -hmm. And is this common for big companies to do so? I don't know. I'm just uh, confused at the moment. I think so, yeah. Because 
um, not everyone is familiar with what is really green and what is really eco-friendly. And yeah. not everyone is willing to check the sustainability sustainability reports of a company, right? So, I mean, th whenever there's a loophole, whenever there's an opportunity to do things that is, uh, that is not morally right, mm -hmm. there will be someone doing that. But yeah. I mean, now, once people found out what will happen to the company, I yeah. mean, it's just a matter of choice. Do you want to be that kind of company if you build one? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. thank you. Is there any website or, I don't know, uh, a federation of something that we can always check the the name of the brand and to make sure that they actually comply um, to I the rules? I think in the U.S. they do have it, and in the European Union they do have it as well. The I forgot FDAC or something, but in Indonesia I'm not sure because um, now all we do is get the SNE one four zero. That's the late, yes. yeah, yeah, right. That's the latest, yeah, okay. that's the latest. So for us, there's the the checkpoint is only that, oh. so we don't know. But we can check the news. We can see. I mean, the what's going on uh, behind. Okay. The brand, yeah. Thank you so much for explaining this because mm -hmm. we just received a question from mm -hmm. Zoom. Mm -hmm. Greenwashing is such an uh, such a such common thing. Thank you for sharing. Okay, how mm -hmm. do you actually check the portion of the term the term eco friendly is actually eco friendly? So going back mm -hmm. to that, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, just in time. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. I'm now reading some questions mm -hmm. coming from you, uh, viewers. Um, but I have one very interesting here. How do, how do you think is the best way to communicate or to educate to those who are, who identify themselves as climate change deniers? Who doesn't believe in climate who change? Who doesn't believe in, in climate change? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, not easy task, it's not but easy. yeah. It's not easy. I mean, you can only try. Um, it's not easy because they actually have experienced the effect of climate change as well, right? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, um, that happens everywhere. It's like COVID. Some believe there's COVID. Even until now, some people still say there's no COVID. There's no COVID. Uh, it, it just happened. It just that's, happened. That's how yeah. the nature works, yes. for example. Okay. Yes. We do what we can to educate, yes. but, but yes. then know your battle, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I can't quite see who is who's this from but the question is Sumba Widya what advice would you give to young women who are interested in pursuing a career in marine biology or conservation excellent okay. go for it I mean this is the time where to start there's no best time I mean I think now when the environmental um, issue is really uh, really, really out there. I mean, I can honestly say uh, it's mainstreaming now. I mean, it's the time to do it. I mean, if you like uh, marine biology, then take that course mm. as your major. Okay. And I think in many parts of the world, they actually encourage women to do it because there's less women in difficult subjects. Like I know in the States, I think this is good information as well because Many people who are listening are students, right? Right. In the U.S., if you are women and you want to go into majors that are usually dominated by men, you are most likely get accepted. Of course, with uh, the condition that you have good grades as well. Yeah. But the the all the university in the states wanna reach that. Um, balanced proportion of female and male. and male. They want to make sure it's equitable. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular university that you would recommend that you think is the best um, a university or top three or top five to learn marine, marine biology, biology oh. or conservation? For the U.S., it's def definitely the UCSD because okay. it's uh, Sea World is there. Ah, yeah, okay. And my professor, he's quite a star professor, Professor George Buckley. I'm studying, um, I was studying sustainable ocean environments with mm -hmm. him. And he w used to work in the sea world. 
and oh, it's nice. they have their own research department and it always collaborates with the UCSD University of California San Diego San Diego yeah. okay mm -hmm. oh start there mm -hmm. let's see mm -hmm. okay we're at America right now um, mm -hmm. they offer a lot of uh, free classes for TOEFL and IELTS so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah starts there and you know where to go mm -hmm. yeah Okay, from your ex next question, mm -hmm. from your experience but in reformers, what are some initiative or creative solution you've seen or implemented in your work to address the challenges facing coral reefs? Um, I think, well, uh, we do coral transplantation, so I think that's one solution, mm -hmm. but there is no magic potion or only one solution. That is it's all, yeah. One mm -hmm of a gazillion of portfolio that might work. It just happened that we choose that and that works in our side, maybe okay. not in other uh, places, but I think eco dive trips is something that is really important as well. You cannot care for something until you fall in love with it, right? Mm. You cannot say you wanna help the ocean before you even know how to dive. You gotta That's go true. in there and true. you'll fall in love with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or basically struck by it not because it's beautiful because it's how damaged yeah they yeah. are because mm -hmm. i took uh, open water license mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we train at pramuka island yeah, Pulau pramuka. yeah. yeah? Uh -huh. not pretty <laughs> no <laughs> like okay what can i see well i'm a beginner so yeah, yeah. Uh, you know I i'll take what i can get but yeah. nothing uh -huh. and mm -hmm. and it's saddening yeah, so it yes yes, yes. Mm -hmm. If you want to fall in love and to make sure that uh, you play an important role in this, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, take a look at our ocean a mm -hmm. little deeper, a little mean, closer. Whatever you want to do, what, whatever initiative you want to create or join, you got to jump in. I mean, you got to go full in. You cannot yeah. just put one feet there. Yeah. Ah, uh -huh. I see. Okay. Next question. As a conservationist, uh, what are particularly memorable or inspiring? story or experience you've had while working to protect coral reefs and what you've learned from it? Maybe a personal story, something that mm. touched your heart. Well, for me, it's always um, the new species that we see every time we visit the site. So the proof, the real proof that our corals are growing well and healthy is the number of species that keep adding up adding up and make our site as their home. Mm. So I remember the first month, I think it's the second month sin since we transplanted the coral, we see razor fishes that follows you wherever you go. Oh, right. Yeah, and they travel in groups. Oh. They're really cute. <laughs> and then the next month we have Nemo, the clownfish with the anemone yeah. in two spots. Oh. And then the next month we have crabs and this and that. There's always something new. Oh, so okay. I think... It's hard to pick one because every time um, it's something different. Oh, yeah. I think maybe the most remarkable one, I was not there, thank God. <laughs> when our divers was cleaning the corals, there's a coral snake right like behind what? here. <laughs> oh, and goodness. Yeah, we have, we have the video in our Instagram. You guys can check is it he, out. Is he okay? He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. okay. <laughs> if you don't provoke them, they will not bite. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Um, keep it coming, guys. We still have five more minutes, so mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you shoot your uh, questions right now. Next is from Afif. Mm -hmm. Can you discuss the concept of uh, biodiversity hotspots and how these areas are identified and prioritized for mm -hmm. conservation efforts? Yeah. Excellent question. Um, Thank you. Yeah, excellent question. Um, actually, um, there's a lot of places that can be considered biodiversity hotspots. I forgot the exact numbers and the re requirement, but you kind of have to have like how many thousands of species there mm -hmm. for it to be a biodiversity considered, considered yeah. a okay, biodiversity so hotspot. Based, based on the numbers, then. the number of species. Number of species. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And any other thing? No. That that is mm, the only criteria. That's, yeah, that's the most important criteria. Maybe. Uh, they also have uh, certain criteria, like it's not a place where people fish. Okay. Like those zoning around uh, uh, the biodiversity spot. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is the number of species. I see. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I'm still waiting for your questions. Uh, we still have five more minutes, but I'm more interested in your um, uh, experience with Harvard, actually. Mm -hmm. You are, uh, you took global development. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you graduated as Master of Liberal of Arts. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, having discussed all this, why at that time you decided to take Global so development. Pursue, yeah, okay. global development. So because my bachelor degree is in finance, mm -hmm. and I have been helping my husband, and he's in the finance world. Okay. And but I always see myself more as an artist instead as a finance person. Artist, not in celebrity artist. Artist yeah. as in. Pekerja seni. Yeah, yeah, I like I like playing music. I like uh, painting, and then. I feel like I get moved easily by many things. I can like so many things. And I would like to be able to explore a lot of different fields mm -hmm. and not be too focused in just one. So global development offers all the courses surrounding the SDG goals. I see. That's why the name is Global Development Practice. Mm. And the additional benefit of it is that we actually put it into practice. So in the class, we solve real problems. We uh, make real organization. And then we interview real practitioners in the field. And then you actually do your own commercial. And it's really um, eye-opening. And you get so many cross-disciplinary. -dis yeah, I there? Can yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it's good. That's yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, this is the uh, uh, the only time we had. Mm -hmm. um, but we did to end our discussion. Anything you would like to add, or you would like to say to mostly ladies logging in, because <laughs> we are celebrating Women's yeah. History Month. Yeah. Anything you would like to say? Yeah. Um, First of all, thank you so much. I haven't had a chance to say hi and thank you to everyone here. And thank you so much for those um, joining through the live stream. Yes. Thank you for tuning in. So uh, I want to share just a last message. It's kind of long, so bear with me. Um, We're listening. <laughs> so climate change is inevitable. Yeah, unfortunately. If you think about it, it is the biggest challenge humanity has ever faced. Yeah. Um, but we actually have solutions. That's the good news. Mm. And one potential solution is to move from depending on fossil fuel to renewable energy. And to speed up this transition, we need many leaders and policymakers working together in various different fields. So this is massive undertakings requiring a whole systemic changes. Yeah. So what can we as the common people do to help address the climate crisis. Yeah. We all can contribute as long as we have the desire to be useful. So this is my invitation to all of you here. Find your role and then contribute your skill, your resources, your robust network that you have accumulated all these years from your education, from your working experience, yeah. from your networking, to a group or initiative that you think are truly doing transformational work. And then when you're done leveraging your talents, you help other people find theirs, yeah. play a role in an existing effort by helping them build a website, help them raise funds, um, help them plan events, recruit talents or get new members and break the societal barrier that prevent other people yeah. from fully devoting themselves to climate solution, be it race, religion, or gender. We all have a role in building the kind of future we are heading to. Um, our actions add up one by one by one. So let's work together for a world where we won't need to ask, what is it like to be a woman working in conservation? Let's work for a future where conservation projects are not highlighted just because they are led by women. But to get to that day, we need to elevate those women 
doing excellent conservation work so that other women who sees them will realize that they can do that too. So first of all, thank you at America for giving me that platform tonight. It's such a perfect way to celebrate the International Women's Week. And um, my heartfelt thank you to all of you here on site and online. I'm truly honored and privileged to be able to share this moment with all of you. I hope this podcast inspires all of you to be an agent of change wherever life plants you. What an amazing time it is to be alive. Um, it's the time to be bold. You all know your superpowers. So the earth is calling. It is our only hope. Let's save it. Thank you. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, Bawidia, Budi Santoso. Couldn't ask for a better closing statement. Thank mm. you so much for sharing your story. Play a significant role. If you don't know where to start, we have mm. Bawidia to guide you. So uh, go to Reformers website, look it up, and start from there. We also have Rafael here. If, if we can get the camera mm -hmm. uh, to shoot La Rafael. No, not yet. Okay. But ladies and gentlemen, right here, we can talk after this with Rafael. Uh, he's also the founder of uh, Reformers. I would like to talk to you later on. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for logging in. Uh, I'm Puri Anindita. It's a pleasure to host you. But hope, I'm a uh, fan. I'm, 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 I'm a fan of yours. <laughs> and hopefully we can, we, we can have another discussion about this again. Okay. So I'm going to toss this session back to Andrea. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much everyone for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed our event today. I hope it has been insightful. And if you enjoyed our event today, please check out our social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at AT America. And please subscribe to our newsletter and YouTube channel as well. And with that, I think we have reached the end of our session for today. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in and see you at the next AT America event.